Hey guys, it's Ellen here. Um, I have a fun tutorial for you today. I know everyone can't travel much and they're feeling kind of down in dumps, but I have a fun little tutorial. Uh, watercolor postcards. Pretend that you're traveling, you know, <laughs> and send them to your friends who are going through a hard time. Um, I have a reference to go with this in the description box, but we just use it as reference. Really just, I didn't really copy it. Couldn't. I just do my own clouds. And the same thing for you. You guys just play around with making clouds and putting the colors down the field, but it's a lot of fun. And then you can just send these out to your friends who are our family members who can use a little pick me up. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Also don't forget to check out my Patreon. I have exclusive tutorials and downloads there on Thursdays. And my other channel, my amazing art channel, which I have um, acrylic demos. You can see it in the description box and on my homepage. So let's get started. Okay, for this, uh, exercise we're going to be using a piece of um, I have a piece of arches 100% cotton this I basically tore a piece that's four and a half inches by six inches which is a postcard size I've taped it down with scotch tape I like to use that um, you can use whatever tape works for you you can use masking tape you can use I find washi tape kind of curls and then the paint gets underneath so it doesn't really give that crisp white line so I didn't really like washi tape um, I've printed out just a couple of photos of reference for me but I'm just using them as a guide and I'll link them I'll put the links in the description box <clears throat> but I'm just using them as a reference like I'm not going to follow exactly to the T but I'm just going to kind of look at the clouds and the greenery and some of the colored flowers in the bottom for the postcard so what we're going to start to do is get our paper fairly wet uh, I have this big fat brush. This is a Princeton Neptune 12 brush. And I'm just going to go from, it's a little blue on that brush. Didn't even realize that. I'm um, going to go from like this three fourths way down and then up. So I'm going to fill that in. And for some reason, this brush has got a color on it. I'm trying to clear it off. So we're going to fill this up and get it fairly wet, but we want this to get wet, but then we're going to let it dry a little bit so it's damp. And unfortunately for me, my brush had paint on it, and so it's a light pale blue hinge, tinge, but that's okay. So it's wet, and we're going to like mix our paint while that's starting to dry so we can have a nice damp piece of paper. So I have my peacock blue here. It's a very bright, bright vibrant blue. Um, you could add any blue you have and you can just dull it down. So I want to dull it down a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of this Van Dyke Brown to it. Just want to mix it up. And maybe a little black. Get this duller blue. Maybe a bluish black. Or I could keep it bright. I might add a little more. I always tab it on my paper towel to see the color tone, and I still think it's too bright. So I'll go ahead and add a little more of that brown. It's looking a little better. All right, so we're going to clean off your brush again, and then we want to dry it on the paper towel. I'm drying mine on the paper towel. And this is nice and... If it's too wet, it's going to make those spider veins coming off the... the um, the paper and you can kind of fix that manipulate that with the brush by just like taking the brush drying cleaning it off drying it off and just going around it um, touching the paint and getting rid of those spider veins just by removing like lifting the paint so we've got our paint here I'm just gonna flood in some color I need more paint so gonna mix a good amount Get that peacock blue and some of that Van Dyke brown. Okay. So I'm just gonna, there's a couple ways I've made clouds before. I'll show you how you lift it just with the paper towel, but now we can do it. We just paint basically around. See, it's nicking that spider thing right here because it was, it's pretty damp, the paper, and I'll show you. See how it's doing that spider thing? And we don't want that. So I will clean up my brush. And then I'll just move 
the paint around it manipulate it that way to soften it up we want soft edges we don't want that spidery vein edges so the paper should start to get a little damp instead of being soaking wet if it's really wet it's going to do that so i'm going to go back in i'm going to paint around where the clouds would be you just look at your reference photo whatever you have for whatever postcard you want to make so you're painting around the areas that are white and then where the white part is we'll add in some grays so i'm painting around where the clouds would be all that blue color and like i said it will have those spider type um bleed if it's too wet, the paper's too wet. Just, again, just painting around where the clouds are. And and actually not really following this. I'm just kind of looking at it and manipulating it. You probably have a thousand photographs in your repertoire that have clouds. So this is how you do it. You're painting, you paint that paper, get that wet, wait till it's a little damp. Gonna zoom back out. And then you're painting around the area you see that's blue, and leaving the rest white. Like I'm doing here. See I've lost some of this clouds. White. And then you can start to go in and add the darker value. So I have that same color, Peacock. And I'll add a little Van Dyke Brown again. It's a little darker. You can tap in just a little bit of the darkness under here. This is going to give you, if it's a little too dry, you can add a little water to it. Remember, this is kind of like an abstract sky. We don't have to be exact. See, I'm adding little darker tones up in here. Just like this. Still showing the clouds, faded in the background. If you wanted to add a little, um, magenta get this more of a ultramarine kind of tone with a little more blue in I mean pink so it's like pinkish blue you can do that see I'm just adding in it's still damp so it's bleeding nicely it's not it's a little spider veining over here like I said I can go in and fix that and clean up my brush get it all that paint off of it dab it on the paper towel and just go in and touch around where that paint is. You can lift, pull up and lift with your brush around where that is if making a spider veins. Just pull up and lift. You're just basically pushing down and lifting up the paint. At this point we're going to make some gray so I grab my black and I'll add a little peacock blue to that. I want a bluish gray. I want black. All right, I'll clean up my brush again. And then I'm going to grab some of this grays and go under the white area. It's a little too wet, so I'm going to dab my paper towel with the brush, get all that wetness off, and then go back in and add the grays underneath that white area. playing around with the clouds here. It's getting a little too light, so I'm going to make it darker. I'm going to add more black, <coughs> excuse me, in the blue. And we'll add that. Just tapping it in just on the outer edge of the cloud. If it's too dark for you, you can just clean off your brush 
go back in and just touch on top of it and move it around. Just lift it up with your paintbrush. And if it's really bleeding too much, that's when you can take a paper towel, rip up a paper towel, and just go in and lift up the paint. And that will do well for that. I'm gonna just add in some of this dark gray and light gray. You see the clouds have that. That's what makes them feel like they're fluffy and puffy. All the different tones inside the clouds. And you don't want the paper too wet. And it's gonna bleed too much. So I'm just adding that darker tone of gray to achieve not as much water on this. The clouds have a lot of variations of gray in them. Going down into here. Grab some of that blue, mix it in. You just want to play around. I would do a bunch of cards um, playing around with making clouds. And again, like I said, you can go in that paper towel and lift up if you're not happy and satisfied. There you go, there's a the sky for that. So then we're going to play around with the ground. Um, it's not too wet that you can't do it right now. So, got some yellow. I still have this gray over here, which I could just, I like to mix tons of colors together. I know in the tutorials it confuses people, but basically you're making green, right? Yellow, blue, add a little Van Dyke brown. I'm putting in a wash of green. So here I'll get my bottom half damp now. Just like I did the top. Less water. Just get it a little damp. You just have like a slight sheen of water. If you if you t tilt your head and look to the side of your paper, you'll see a slight sheen. You don't want to see a puddle. I'm gonna go in and add some of this pretty green. Just filling in. Cross. I'm doing, working on the top one with the purples, which would be kind of fun. And we can throw on those trees in afterwards. So I have this nice, bright, light, pale screen. Just filling in across. Well, that's starting to dry. We can make a darker one. I have a little Van Dyke Brown, the Peacock Blue, Yellow, more blue, more yellow, more brown. <laughs> Keep mixing the color. Or if you have just a straight out green that you like, you just mix that green up. I'm trying to get the right tone. You know, when you have just a limited amount of colors, it's more of a challenge. There. Let's get it in the creamy um, texture. You don't want it too loose. I'm still using this fat brush. It's great. And then we just take the tip of it. Just go across here. A little bit over in here. It should bleed nicely. Back in here. Just like the little lines where the fields would be. like that. And then the front, I'm going to mix up some purple. I have quinacridone magenta and I'll grab some. That peacock blue is getting a little dirty. Okay, peacock blue. 
and we have a nice purple. And since they're like stock flowers, you can just do a little, see that's gonna bleed really, it's still too wet. So we're gonna have to wait for that one. I might grab a skinnier brush. I have my Princeton eight long round. Take some of this darker green and just make these little lines going up the spikes because those purple flowers are going to be like stock flowers, almost like lavender, but they're just wild flowers. Just like that. Put some lines up. And actually in the front, a little darker green again because it shows dark. Just gonna throw in some of this dark green. If it's dry, which it did right there, you can take your brush, get some water on it, and manipulate it. And I just erased everything I just did, which is fun. <laughs> See, I'm tricking you guys. Go and add some darker tones in the front, and a little more on the back. Just I'm just grabbing that brown, and the peacock blue, and the yellow. Throwing in some nice dark tones. I'm playing around with this. And I'm going to throw some in just in here. Sporadic in here. And we, at this point, we could do the trees too. We could make these nice dark trees. So I have the, the blue, the green. Make it darker blue, green. And you can just put some simple trees. I'm just taking my little Princeton Long Eight Brown brush. And see, I'm just doing this little dab. I'm just tapping in the trees. If you want to make it easier, just put a wash of color and then have them bleed out. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tap it in. This is the wet on dry. It could be super loose, it'd be less, it'd be more translucent if it's loose. You know, it would be opaque if it's less water. We're just going to tap in some trees in here. Just in the countryside. And there was some, let me get some more of this blue. I'm trying to get this really dark green. I might actually add some black to achieve the super dark green that I want. There we go. And I just want to put some little trees over in here on the side. They were way off in the distance. We're just putting these little dabs. So this looks like little teeny trees way off in the distance and they're dark. And put a little dark round over here. We could throw on some of that dark paint. Just tap it in there so it bleeds a little bit. Just to give it more interest. You can even actually put some black right in there too. There you go. And now we can start adding in our purple flowers. So we have the blue with the magenta. Some nice purple. Creamy texture. And actually those flowers are a little more pinkish purple, so I'll add more magenta. Get more of a pinkish purple. Almost like a magenta itself. And then we can just do the little taps. of the purple. It's everywhere. So, whoops. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> and paper towel right away solved that problem. There we go. I'm just going to tap in some purple tones. Now, here's a trick. If it seems too dark and you obviously you have the green down and you want to make it lighter, take some of your gouache. Voila. Add the purple to it. And because it's gouache, you can go right on top of it. And you achieve the light color that you're looking for. 
because it's opaque. So I'm going to add some more pink. And we're just tapping in. See, I'm just dabbing the purple all along, like you see in the field. So I'm down in here. Grab some of this darker color. And then put some up front. It doesn't have to be like this perfect stalks of purple. You're just indicating the flowers in the field. And then I would grab in some that dark green that we mixed and put some underneath. You can do the little stems if you want. Just tap some of that in. See, I'm just tapping with my brush. I'll clean it off and grab some of this yellow. Mix it in with that green, make it light, pale yellow. Again, or you can just take yellow itself and just go in here while it's still wet. See, I'm just throwing in the color. Grab some more of this green. Just playing around with adding the greens next to the, the purple. Different tones, some dark, some light, some dark up front. But it's just like an expression. It's not the realistic, you know. And if you go in here and it's all wet, like see I'm making it wet and messy, and you're not happy, again, this is why you keep paper towels handy. Just go in there and look at that. You can actually just lift it and you have this nice dreamy kind of light, you know, kind of dreamy mystical flowers. I'm going to go back in with your color. Just tap in it again. Get that magenta. Just playing around with playing with that. See, it's not as real, it's not these realistic stocks. I wouldn't suggest splattering it because that's going to go everywhere. You're just taking the tip of your brush and just moving. Hey guys, I know that video cut me off, but basically I was at the end. You're taking the tip of your brush and it's moving around just like so, like I did. And then it has this nice bleed to it. And that's pretty much it, you know. And then I just took up, lifted up the scotch tape and completed and started on the next one. Okay, moving on to the second one, we have the same kind of situation where we're gonna do like three quarters of the way, get this damp. Um, I use a different paint and this time I'm gonna use a Prussian blue, but like again, you can use cerulean blue, any color blue that you feel comfortable with. Again, this, I don't know why this still blue on this paintbrush, it's, it's so annoying, but we're gonna work with it. Um, again, I'm just going to kind of use it as a guide, but I'm going to make my own clouds. I'm going to try and do... So I have this Prussian blue. Uh, it's a little bright and tense. I'm going to tone it down just a bit with the black. And I want it fairly... lighter than the last one. I might even throw a little magenta in here just to make it a little more like an ultramarine. So again, you kind of want to wait till it's a little damp, not super wet, and it's just going to paint around the clouds. See, mine's a little too wet. You can see the spider thing happening. I'm just going to manipulate it just for intensive purposes of getting this done. I'm going to go wash in some of the color here and washing it in here. A little bit up and over in here. And the rest will be like these white gray clouds that we're going to play around with. It has a big cloud in the front, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make it all blue. So, like I said, I take the reference and I 
I just use it for reference, don't actually necessarily have to follow to the T. I'm actually going to add some darker blues up this way. And that'll be the blue. I'll put a little bit in here. Portion of the sky. The rest will be using grays. So the black here. Add a little blue to it. And the grays. I always like to tap it on my paper towel. Get some of that color off. I'm just going to start by putting in that gray kind of mountain part. Okay, so I'm taking the grays, a little drier, less water, just tapping in. See, I'm just using the tip of that brush again, tapping in. You have, it's really kind of like tricky. You got to just kind of play around with putting in some of the darker tones and the lighter tones with the clouds to getting that. It's really just kind of like the underneath part, the clouds. You know, and I told you before, you just take that paper towel and you just go in and lift it if you're not happy. So right now I'm not happy with where it's, it's going. I just feel like it's moshing around grays. I'll just lift it up a little bit. And that will help too. You're just going to have to keep playing with it, adding in the grays, and leaving that white part. See, I'm adding that dark gray back in here, which is that kind of mountainous area. I'm just going to wash in some of the gray again up in here. Clouds can be tricky. I'm not gonna lie. And I'll clean up my paper t uh, paintbrush, and I'll just kind of mush this around. Not too much. I want them gray, but not so gray. Sometimes it helps to stand up and see how your clouds are looking. If you're happy with it. You do want the soft edges, so you're going to have to manipulate lifting the paint and putting it down. I'm just going to keep playing around with that. And then up over in here if you want to lift up some paint for the soft edges of the clouds. So I digress. We're going to move on to the greenery. Again, I'm going to wash in. Now if you wanted to do, um, you know, you could have a uh, masking fluid and just dot in like the, the poppies but again we're going to just cheat and we're going to just put the color in I'm just using this green that I had here I'm washing that in cross and we're going to manipulate that was wet on dry I didn't wet it first this time and I'm going to put in some of that darker green grab some of this yellow and that brown's there, Van Dyke Brown. Just gonna wash in some of this really nice dark. If you don't have brown, just grab some of your magenta and it'll get darker that way. This dark tones of the mountainous area. Again, adding a little more. I'll clean up my brush and I'll just push this paint around again. I'll grab a little yellow and push that around. So it's very wet right now. We're moving paint around. And there's a light green area back here. And I still want to add some more dark tones right up in front. 
But this is, you know, this is, can be, I, I had some just right on, straight on Prussian blue right in there. You want to have fun with this. You don't have to worry about the picture. It doesn't look exactly the same. It doesn't have to be. It's not, you know, it shouldn't have to be. We're having fun. We're just playing around. I'm going to add some darker tones on the corner over here. And again, I might go in and add some brownish tones up in here going across. So it's really wet right now. You don't want to stick any color of, um, of the poppies on. And if it's feeling too dark, you can try and lift up some of the paint with your brush or a paper towel, whichever you prefer. See? And actually, if you have received paper towel, if you want to make a texture, you just manipulate it like that. See that cool texture it leaves? It's like this mystery, foggy, kind of cool texture. Be careful not to overdo it. You can go back and add a little more paint. But just do a little bit, otherwise it becomes a mess. So I'm just gonna add a little more paint back in here. And we're gonna let this dry. And come back to it and paint the poppies. I want a little more brightness, so. Don't want to play around with too much because then the paper is going to start to get all mush. All right, we'll let this dry and come back. Okay, once that's dry, we're going to do our same trick with the gouache with, um, with orange paint. We're going to take the yellow, magenta, make a nice orange, pretty orange. And we're going to grab some of that white gouache, mix it in. And then we can go and add our little poppies. A little bigger towards the front. Now they look like they're floating right now. So what we'll do is we're going to add some color underneath it. Because it does kind of look floaty, doesn't it? And they only show it like one side, but we can add as many poppies as we want. That's the beauty of doing whatever you want. I might do some small ones in the background. They didn't show that. Like it's a field. Like again, do your own thing. Don't have to follow any rules, particularly for this. So I'll clean up my brush and I'll get a darker green. So I have that Prussian blue and the yellow. Make this deeper green. Add a little magenta. Tone it down a bit. And then we'll just put some color underneath the poppies and you can put the little stems if you want. Just see, I'm just pushing the little stems down underneath them, like so. So they might seem like they're still floating. You can just clean up your brush, get a little water on it, dab it in a paper towel, and just put some color, again, washing it around inside, like around it, just like that. It would seem less floaty, if that makes any sense. So I'm just gonna wash in some color just like that. Wet on dry. And again, I can grab some of that blue, throw that behind it, in the front. Now, if you wanted to do more darker tones and then add the poppies later, you could do that too. But this is kind of how I play around with it. I get the placement down first. Then I'll go in and add some of the darker greenery. Just my way of doing it. And I kind of like it to bleed. Just again, just my way of doing it. Add some yellow. Brighten it up. 
and that's pretty much it with this guy again you can go back in and add some more oops of the poppies get that bright orange play around with it so mine doesn't look kind of like that one but I get the inspiration from it that's all that matters it's all that matters there you go so let's lift that tape, tape up on this one I left the tape on the other one I'll show you very sticky scotch tape so you got to be careful lifting this up it can rip the cardboard but you don't want it to rip your card so look how pretty that is we have that one and we have this one now if you want to save it so it doesn't get um, destroyed and ruined just get some matte medium spray spray over it so it stays so it doesn't have it coats it and won't get it I don't know how well it will make it from not bleeding with water on it but that's a way to, good way to save it so there you go two postcards you can send them out to friends who are kind of feeling depressed right now not feeling good say I'm thinking about you you know I know things are tough so hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial um, don't forget to check out my patreon I do exclusive videos and uh, traceables down each week Thursdays I have that other channel the acrylic channel um, I put a new video, I'm putting a new video out for that one today. Um, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Take care. I'll speak to you soon.